Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to a new episode of Flesh Wound Farce, where we review and discuss your and our favorite comedy films. This is the world's first and only combination trivia host and professional wrestling announcer of Chilean descent that currently resides in Southern California, Ozzy V. And with me as always on this program, first in the Northern California Bay Area, world's famous juggler, Greg Larson. How you doing, Greg? I'm doing great. I got a racing rig for my VR, so I'm a happy camper. How about yourself, Ozzy? That's fantastic. I mean, VR is like ahead of its time at this moment. And just to add a, another peripheral to it to help complete the VR experience has got to be fantastic. And I can only imagine what what's that, that's that got to be like. Also, this Flesh Room producer, Todd. How you doing, Todd? can only imagine the things you do with a car VR setup, Ozzy. I drive. <laughs> I mean, drive. I don't, I don't know what there else is to do with it. Uh, you definitely rig. played some GTA. <laughs> Anyhow, ladies and gentlemen, we are not reviewing a film version of GTA. No, this week we are reviewing and discussing Wet Hot American Summer, which was released on July 27th, 2001, rated R. The runtime of 97 minutes. Tom, do you have a trailer available? Oh, was I supposed to have that ready? Oh, my God. Like, uh, did we learn nothing from last week? Okay, then I'll take this time to thank was, our Patreon subscribers. Joking. Todd, you're interrupting okay. my thanks to the Patreon subscribers. Show some respect. I'd like to show thanks to the Patreon subscribers. Thank you for being a subscriber. Thank you for participating in our votes for which films we'll get to review shortly or eventually. Todd will have a a new slate of movies that you'll have an opportunity to vote to choose from. Hopefully none of them are Superman three, but no, that's for a commentary. Will be Superman three. <sighs> Anyhow, Todd, do you have the trailer ready yet? It's been ready. You could have just said like, okay, trailer's ready. I, I did. You're like, did. I'm taking the patrons, <laughs> but thank you. Patrons. And everyone else watching. Say, I like you too. You could be a patron easily just this summer. Take a trip back to 1981 with the special people who made summer camp unforgettable. You guys aren't supposed to be out of your bunks. You're in trouble. The camp director. Four campers are stuck in the ropes course. I meant to tell you about that yesterday. Could you get to it now? The counselors. Wait for me, Abby Bernstein. Wait for me, my darling. Wait, wait, wait. I just want to take off my shirt. The kitchen staff. Finish up the taters. I'm going to go fondle my sweaters. Come on, <laughs> what? You said you were going to go fondle your sweaters. No, I didn't. The water sports. Hey, Andy, can I take out the Barbie bus? Sure. The nature hikes. Out! Oh. Oh. And of course, who can forget the sex, the muggings, the cover-ups, the malaria, <laughs> the psychotherapy. Hello. And the friendships that last a lifetime. We want you to be the guest of honor at our wedding next week. From USA Films <laughs> and creators of TV's The State. A renegade piece of Skylab heading right for the camp. Oh my God. It could kill us all. Oh. Janine Garofalo, David Hyde Pierce, Paul Rudd, Christopher Maloney, and Molly Shannon. Andy, have you seen my swimming buddy? I was busy. It's your job to make sure kids don't drown. Um. Where are we going? To a big secret pizza party. <laughs> Wet hot American summer. I didn't know that's what malaria looked like. <laughs> That was the trailer for Wet Hot American Summer. Again, released on July 27, 2001, rated R, with a runtime of 97 minutes. Written by David Wayne and Michael Showalter. Directed by David Wayne. Michael Showalter actually playing the role of Coop in the film. With Janine Garofalo, as well as David Hyde Pierce. It's more of an ensemble cast. I mean, you have early Paul Rudd, Amy Poehler here as well. Uh, Bradley Cooper, in Michael Ian Black. It's... It's a treat to see uh, and initial thoughts on this. I had always caught parts of this movie, but never the whole thing from start to finish. It's the best way to and, watch it, I think. Sorry? Probably the best way to watch it in parts. Well, I think because it's it seems like a, a light sketch comedy movie because there's several stories going on in their own little worlds. 
Um, but I had some fun with it just because, I mean, I haven't had experiences at a summer camp like this where you're gone for like the complete three months. I've done like week long summer camps. So there's like, there were some light connections where I got a kick out of, uh, but this was completely exaggerative. So it, it was, well, I'll get into this momentarily. Greg, initial thoughts. So I had recently watched this film, which I think is to the detriment of my review today. <laughs> um, but this, I love these like coming of age summer movies because uh my my early career was at great america it wasn't summer camp but man did it feel like it between <laughs> you know just the craziness the shenanigans um even going to disney full-time you know the parties afterwards and all this stuff it, it was it was a very big like part of my life that that was a lot of fun um so a lot of these moments do like hit home um but i had watched it because of the netflix series that came up and as i've mentioned in the past movies i i don't often watch multiple times uh, unless they're a special breed and the first time i watched it uh recently was under a few influences <laughs> <laughs> and it definitely drove the movie a little bit more. But when you know what's going to happen, I think it does take away from some of the film. I got you. Todd? Um, this is one I wanted to like. My, yeah, I mean, um, I like the state. I think the joke just stays too long. I think, and I haven't watched it. I tried to start the, the series once before. Or the first series, well, the yeah, but I I don't know. I feel like that might be a little bit like thirty minute blocks to me seems like more palatable. Doesn't like I don't need that like the length of yeah. Like if this would have been broken up, you mentioned multiple stories, and it would have been a couple episodes. I think it would have been a. I don't know. I just don't. I'm not a fan of the length. It, the humor. I don't know. It doesn't work for me for ninety minutes. The... But no, I was gonna say but. Yeah, I had the most fun with this movie this time, and I was, uh, I, I did influenced. Uh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, there there are some fun mo moments, but uh, the last twenty five minutes were real tough <laughs> to get through. I think it it really almost tough. feels like they had some good ideas, and they probably had all these like post it notes filled with gags, right? Mm -hmm. On and they're like figuring out, okay, this will happen to this person, this will happen to this person, but they didn't figure out what the aftermath was going to be, because everything, it just really seemed like a giant hot mess. And I almost, I really wanted to turn it off towards the end. Like, I and that, and the middle, I really enjoyed. Like, my favorite moments are from, from the middle, but, like, once you get past a certain point, it's like, what happened? It's 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 almost like they had all these multiple stories going on, right? And they needed a way for them to finish together. And don't you it, know that never happens, right? Yeah. But but it seems the f that's what the effort was, no, right? Yeah. And there was one one gag where I'm not. I thought at for a second I thought it was a joke and that the kids were just playing around and it turned out to be a serious thing. And I was like, that was not only incredibly stupid, but also incredibly unnecessary. Um, it was the Skylab, the rogue satellite gimmick. Uh, uh. And it's like, this is all, this is way too much. And I know like, you'll give me, you give me flack when a movie has too much, you know, like, Oh, we, we don't want too much in a movie. Like, right. Ozzy. But, Nah, that was too much, and it made me want to turn off the movie. I didn't, but it made me want to, and well, it had yes. it 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 affected movie's final score. But there was some. So I'm not the crazy one. That's all I'm hearing. <laughs> Correct. When I was well, watching I mean, this ending, I thought to my... together, but okay, this is true. Okay, no, no, no. But <laughs> when when I was watching the ending and like how everything just felt like a hot mess, 
I thought I can see why Todd is not a fan. Well, okay. Now you sh- if you really think about it, what I don't like about it, it's a summer camp comedy. So what does it need more of for me to enjoy it? Nudity. Well, I, I was going to say like sex comedy, but yes. I mean, I don't want to see Amy Poehler's rack or anything. I'm just saying. It needed a little bit more shenanigans. No one tried to steal any panties. And now, and this would have been a parody. It wouldn't have been Ozzy like, oh, we can't do that. <laughs> well, I, mean, I don't know. There are some major parody moments in the movie. There is. Which, there is. you know, we're fine. But like some of it was like, there, there was a moment where kind of felt like grease a little bit where the guy changes to get the affection of the girl and even then it oh. doesn't matter <laughs> like so well, i think one of the things with this film is it didn't pick a lane you know because in the first half of the film it did have some you know storyline and it was building some things and it had moments and then the second half of the film just had a lot of ridiculous You know, and if like you were set up the entire time of, oh, this is all ridiculous, you know, and like super slapsticky, you know, um, you know, like the the moment at the end when they start destroying the nurses area and it's like way over the top and such, you know, I I think we just it it really switches lanes at one point. You just kind of have a WTF moment when you get halfway through. Yeah. Uh there were there were moments that were heavily exaggerated so you thought oh okay we're gonna go in this direction now and all of a sudden there's something kind of tame like yeah. it's a it's a crass joke but it's not done to like a i'll just say this there's a talent show and a kid goes to light his fart on fire right mm-hmm. this was in 2001 and it was just like a you know like 2001 were what at this point six seven years removed from dumb and dumber where Jim Carrey does the gag in that, and it's a giant fireball. So, right, right. you I can't... Think, sorry? No, I think they're trying to go the opposite with this. I think that's the joke. Right. And but I, but it, didn't, it didn't hit because that's they what already I was went... Right. Yeah, and it that's, doesn't that's, hit because that's of its that. problem, is yeah. that you they go to that ridiculous point. Mm-hmm. So when you see the kid go in that position, and he's got the lighter, you're like, oh, this is going to be huge, but it's not. And it's strange because, Greg, to your point, you're set up like it, it has a hard time picking a lane. Yeah, because you're thinking, oh, it'll, it's going to go this way. OK, now it's switching gears to this. And now it's just keeps going back and forth. So when something incredibly ridiculous happens, it seems out of place. And it just seems like, is this is this like backstage footage when they're just messing around? Yeah, like, even it didn't like fit. Show. You know, at the end, you have the guy who has that extreme goes over the top moment, but you're like, yeah, but that wasn't the one that it would have paid off well with. (laughs) So So. it's almost like that towards the end, they had a collection of just random, uh, random, massive fantasy moments, if you will. Mm -hmm, Right. mm -hmm stuff that didn't make a whole lot of sense just piled together so it's kind of like watching some wrestling shows in some degrees <laughs> you know you see wrestlers helping each other out they can balance themselves on the top rope don't fall don't fall wait no hold on a second wait wait and you know who's okay. fault it is sabu <laughs> <laughs> all right sorry i didn't mean to sidetrack on that but let's get into the favorite moments as there was some moments in this film that did make me crack up the top of that was seeing Amy Poehler's character, Susie, after uh, the camp director had told the robot kid, OK, you know, you can do something in the talent show. Five minutes later, she come and But before she says her name, Beth, she's huffing and puffing. And there's a sense of genuine anger and frustration and disdain because she's already working with pieces of crap like, you know. <laughs> shoot the way she delivers that whole thing and and talks about making my life a living hell that whole delivery was fantastic and i needed to watch it twice uh hands down my favorite moment in the entire movie so i'm gonna say two because one is just a funny moment one's a personal moment that that did hit well with me um so 
there's a moment where Janine Garofalo's character is trying to, you know, flirt with this guy. And he talks about being, you know, into space and all these things, astrophysicist. And she goes, ah, yes, space, the final frontier. And he has this moment of like, okay, moving on. You know, as if <laughs> I've heard that a million times. And as a juggler who has heard, oh, you play with your balls, like <laughs> jokes the same way a million different times. I'm like, you're not original, buddy. Like, it's not funny. And and so I, I kind of had a personal connection to that moment. But there's, and, and for anyone who's not seen this, I'm going to save the speech itself but there is a speech involving a fridge and what a man plans to do with it that I definitely had a good chuckle with. Uh, well, well, mine's a very humorous exchange. This is like the first time I've ever laughed out loud while watching this movie. And did I ever think it was from a come from a cast member of Fraser? No. <laughs> but, <laughs> Jan, Jan, Janine Garofalo says, oh, don't tell me. Don't tell me. You have crabs. No. Well, yes, but but that's besides the point. That, that <laughs> gosh, <laughs> all right. And he just knows stuff, and it's just all straight, and that's what got me. Now, I I do have to say, uh, Paul Rudd's performance as that annoying teenager that like thinks he's everything, and the way he moved around when he was being told to clean up after himself. And just, you know, just like dragging his body through the movements right. was so authentic. <laughs> and especially with Beth Garofalo's character just standing there looking at him, just waiting for him to hurry up. Like, we'll be here for as long as you want. Like, I've been I've been in that spot of just like, take as much time as you want. We're here for as long as, you know, whatever. So that that made me chuckle, especially his his role in really nailing that aspect of it of just that like it may have seemed like over exaggerated but it's actually pretty spot on when when teenagers actually do that so no, yeah. pretty funny you or, or even or even like teenagers that have yet to grow up and end up getting jobs at disneyland and you know you end up being their leads and you gotta treat them like kids you know <laughs> Sorry, you don't get the shift you want, but there's a breakfast shift that you need to be at. <laughs> Fine, I'll get my costume together. Yeah, stupid Ozzy. I was going to ask you. Do, do you know what Paul Rudd's first movie was? Uh, I do not. Greg? Mac and me? <laughs> he was not in that, unfortunately. <laughs> Most people say Clueless, but the correct answer is Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers. He plays Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers. The last good Halloween. Fight me. Um, yes, he plays young Tommy Doyle. Part that was last uh, played by last played by um, Anthony Michael Hall. Okay. Well, I mean, like, um, I don't want to argue with you, but... They don't alphabet alphabetize them. They they go alphabetically. So if a movie's the same year, it's in it's doesn't matter that it comes before. Okay. So do you recall when that Halloween movie was released? Um, it was nineteen ninety six. Yes, ninety six. I would hope not because the clueless 95 95 was July 19th, 1995. Yes, Halloween Curse of Michael Myers was released on September 29th, 1995. So, Todd, I apologize, you are incorrect. Oh, uh, well, Paul Rudd's first major, major well, movie. first it, released. Okay, yes, his first starring role is still. Halloween six. He is not the star of Clueless. Okay. No, but you but the, but you had said like people think Paul Rudd's first movie was Clueless. Okay, yeah, you're um, right. I should have should have been a little on a second. wait, stop. Could, but, could you just and, go back, back a second? Say I that. can. I can don't say, say it again. again. I'm not going again. to because here's a little another bit of trivia. <laughs> that movie was put on a shelf and technically should have already been out. And because of this, legally, the credit on Halloween six says and introducing Paul Rudd because it's his first film. 
But he was already been introduced, so they should have taken. But he that. wasn't because contractually, because that movie came okay. out first. Okay. Right. No, I understand that. But um, in the theater, <laughs> when when did people first see it in the theater? Again, starring. That's not what I asked. You know, oh, well, it's they... funny someone talking about semantics who has a trophy right next to him. That, <laughs> that means I'm a champion. Yeah. There's no semantics about me being a champion, Greg. Don't be jealous. Mm -hmm. Do we rate this? I don't think we were, we were being sidetracked about Paul Rudd's first movie and, and Todd's incorrect uh, assumptions about him and where he was introduced so anyhow, let's get into the ratings. Let's do it. I enjoyed some moments of this, but again, that hat that lasts about 25 minutes really had a tough time with, but not enough to give it lower than a three for me. So I'm going to put it right there as a three. Just be fair because I had some fun with it, that there are some moments again towards the end. They were just really tough to get through. Yeah, it, had you asked me the first time I watched this, I would have given it a four. Um, I remember really enjoying it. I remember having a bunch of good laughs. Um, but this time, um, it does drop down to a three. Um, once you get kind of the surprise of certain moments, kind of loses it. Um, it's still a fun, like, rent it kind of movie. But um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's a three for me. I got to say before Todd's uh, rating real quick, I think it'll stay a three for me specifically because I could never get tired of Michael Ian Black repeatedly telling the kid to take a shower because <laughs> he just refuses to. He just refuses to take a shower and he's going to be like, hey, take a shower. I shouldn't have to tell you. Take a shower. You want to take him to wrestling shows, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. Okay. So, I'm sorry, Todd. Uh, you're you're ready. Oh, I'm a two. Get this shit out of here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen. You see why I was oh, like my. stomping stomping my feet when this one came up. Yeah, you you really. <laughs> then you tried to get me two and oh, jeez, so, oh, I, I I pulled the diva card for once. <laughs> All right, Ozzy, get us out of here. My bad. Well, I just was gonna let people know where they can watch this, and just in case. Now, obviously, Todd did not watch any of the mini series that was released on Netflix. Greg, did you get a chance to do that? I did. It wasn't bad. Better than... say, but that's what it is. Better or? Uh... I think with it being episodic, it made it better. Pa more palatable. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I got gotcha. you. Okay. Well, this I'll original it. is not available to stream anywhere. It is available for purchase and rental where your favorite uh provider can has that available but unfortunately not available to stream at this time and at this time we're recording on june 18th so it so give it a shot just in case comes out, it'll be on hbo max <laughs> like johnny dangerously <laughs> i'm telling you they're 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 keyed into us they're waiting to see what we're gonna do and then they're just gonna release it there it's a, like a secret partnership they just don't want to pay us <laughs> well no one wants to do that so do you guys <laughs> let's except, for Patreons. Patreons. except for Patreons. Except for them. And thank you again. Now, I know we don't live on the East Coast, and East Coast is where primarily these where they send away kids to summer camp is more popular. And like I said, I, I spent time at like just week long summer camps, but do you guys have any summer camps memories that you wanted to share? Can I tell my not church fine. camp story? No. Sure. <laughs> no, I'm not okay. doing that with you. No. Um, I, I did like sixth grade camp, like with the school for like the week and um, other stuff like that. But um, I remember my best friend got stung by a bee like on our way there in the lip and he had to go home the first day. <laughs> but So I don't have a summer camp, but as I mentioned, Great America was kind of my summer camp in a way. Um, there was a party that I went to and there were lots of drinking and good times that happened. And, uh, my dad, uh, and, and we're recording this on father's day. So, uh, you know, happy father's day to all and a uh, great moment to bring this up. Uh, my dad had said to me, son, 
I don't care if you drink underage. Just don't drive. I'll come pick you up. You call me anytime. I won't judge you. I'm just glad you'll make it home safe. So I did. I called him and I was really drunk and he picked me up. <laughs> and that next day I was like, oh man, I forgot my pager. This dates the story. <laughs> um, I forgot my pager at the place of the party. And so that next morning, extremely hungover, <laughs> we decide to go and pick it up and which we do and then driving back there was a massive massive car accident where there were like tarps over mm. pieces uh and mm. such and so my stomach didn't handle that all too well and but we made it through and it was all good and once we made it through and my dad saw i was uncomfortable he goes you want to turn around and go see it again? <laughs> so uh, I had spent some time as a camp counselor, right? Not like the kind that actually, you know, would uh, hide or throw kids in the forest who would threaten to rat me out for stuff. I wasn't, I wasn't like that, but uh, you just one yelled of the at him. <laughs> I mean, like Ozzy without yelling is like a cheeseburger without cheese. So it was very tough to be one of these counselors because you would be given often more than just one responsibility to do stuff. So anytime that you had like a chance to sleep was fantastic because sometimes you'd be on something called stump duty where you'd be out till two in the morning to make sure people are actually asleep. So just for like, for example. So one of these times I want, I have a chance to go to the cabin and immediately crash. Now at this cabin, all the campers had all the bunks and the two counselors would sleep on the couch couches in the living room of the cabin. So that's where my bed was. So I was there taking a nap and all of a sudden I wake up to giant pillows being hit on my, the back of my head and <laughs> my back from my campers and they had tied my shoes to a chair so when i tried to get up i couldn't because my shoes were tied to a chair and i said i'll get you back for this and the next morning during wake up i i woke up the major culprit time to wake up him with the same pillow he hit me with. <laughs> it's my story now you, get, you, now you gotta work in camp counselor till you're of cuban descent gimmick at the beginning there you go Chilean. That's what I said. Although the Cuban would work more better with the alliteration. <laughs> the sounding Chilean versus Cuban, you know. But anyhow, I'm still not going to change chick, it. Boom, chick, chick, boom, chick, chick, boom. Okay, that's enough. All right, ladies and gentlemen. That is world-famous juggler Greg Larson and Flesh Wound producer Todd. And I'm Ozzy V, and we'll see you next week on a new episode of Flesh Wound Farce.